Okay, in this video I want to start working on um, a couple of different metabolic mutations and what effects they might have on the um, different metabolic pathways. So let's just jump right into it and it says the loss of the binding sites for fructose 1,6-bisphosphate on pyruvate kinase. So what would happen if we lost the binding sites for fructose 1,6-bisphosphate on pyruvate kinase? Now pyruvate kinase is um, an enzyme that's involved in glycolysis, okay? So what F16BP does is it activates pyruvate kinase. You might remember that from my previous videos. So F16-bisphosphate activates pyruvate kinase. Okay? And it activates pyruvate kinase through what's known as a feed-forward mechanism. So I'm going to say that through a feed-forward mechanism. Okay, so F16BP activates pyruvate kinase through a feed-forward mechanism. All right, and um, basically what that's doing is it's warning the enzyme, okay? It's warning the enzyme that there's a high flux through glycolysis, okay? So I'll also say that. So it's a warning that there is a high flux Okay, there, there's a high flux through glycolysis. So that's the whole point. I mean, F16BP is an activator of pyruvate kinase. And it activates it through what's known as a feed-forward mechanism, okay? Because what that's doing is it's letting the it's letting the enzyme pyruvate kinase, which is the last enzyme that you're going to have in glycolysis reaction, know that um, there's a lot of action going on in the glycolysis pathway that it's going to need to be ready to handle a higher flux of um, intermediates okay and start converting those to pyruvate and that's exactly how this works so you know if this mutation if there's a mutation here then it's going to prevent this from occurring okay it's going to prevent this from occurring and if it prevents it from occurring what's going to happen well I'll tell you if it prevents it from occurring glycolysis is going to slow down so for my final thing, I'm just going to say glycolysis is slowed, okay? It doesn't stop, okay? A lot of people have the misconception that when they say these things, they say, well, glu well glycolysis stops, okay? Or, or, you know, glycolysis no longer operates, but that's not true, okay? In all these cases, what's really happening is you're just either down-regulating or up-regulating. So these things are occurring to a degree, but in certain under certain conditions, they occur much more readily. Under other conditions, they don't occur as readily, okay? So F16BP is um, extremely important. So if you lose that binding site, you're going to lose the up-regulation on pyruvate kinase. The loss of the up-regulation on pyruvate kinase is going to result in a, slow, a slower glycolysis process, okay? So the next thing I want to do here is go right into B. And that says that the loss of the binding site for AMP, okay, remember AMP, I always say AMP is a signal that the cell is low on energy. So if there's a so if there's a loss of the binding site for AMP and fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, what's going to happen? Well, first thing we should remember is AMP inhibits the enzyme, okay? So AMP inhibits the enzyme okay and what that is is um this should say i might have made a mistake here this should probably say fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase okay bisphosphatase is involved not in um glycolysis but in gluconeogenesis okay and that and that's what's going on here um this should say bisphosphatase because this is the enzyme that converts some um, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose-6-phosphate in, in gluconeogenesis, okay? So in 
So this should say bis fos fetase. Okay. Um, and again, that's an inhibitor of this enzyme because remember, in order for gluconeogenesis to occur, it's going to need to be um, have plenty of energy. So AMP being a signal that the cell is low on energy tells me that you know this is not good for gluconeogenesis. So you can already kind of see where this is going. So, and that's since high, since a high concentration, and I'm just going to use the brackets for concentration here, since a high concentration of AMP suggests, okay, that glycolysis, okay, that glycolysis, not gluconeogenesis, is needed, okay, is needed, not gluconeogenesis, okay. So the mutation, you know, will make it harder to shut down gluconeogenesis, okay, um, while glycolysis is active, okay. And um, the cell risks having what's known as a feudal cycle going on here. We talked about feudal cycles before. So, um, you know, I'm just going to say that the cell risks having... A feudal cycle okay and that's just waste energy all that does is produce heat anytime you're talking about a feudal cycle at all only all it does is produce some heat so basically if we have a loss of the binding site here though um, actually I may have been saying some silly things here but anyway we have a loss of a binding site for AMP now AMP is an inhibitor of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate so if we lose the binding site then what's going to happen is we're not going to be able to downregulate. So when AMP concentrations are high, we're not going to be sh able to shut down gluconeogenesis. Okay, so if gluconeogenesis continues to function, um, but AMP concentrations are high because the gluconeogen because the the enzyme fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase is not recognizing because it lost its binding receptors or binding sites for AMP, it's not recognizing that the concentrations are high, we end up with a feudal cycle because we have glycolysis working because AMP concentrations are high and everything presumably in the glycolysis pathway is working just fine. Um, we wind up with a, with a bad situation here. So, I mean, I, I might have got a little off track talking about some other aspects, but the bottom line here is that you're not going to be able to shut down gluconeogenesis as efficiently, which could lead to the development of a feudal cycle. Okay? So, I'm going to try and do these other two in another video. Um, I think I'm running out of time here. I don't want to make it too long. So, I'm going to do these other two in the next video.